Hello everybody, welcome to the show and today I wanted to briefly describe aeroponics, growing with it, and why you probably won't be using aeroponics much if you're a cannabis grower. It's a method that's designed to minimize water usage while maximizing nutrient uptake and grow speed by eliminating almost all of the growing medium in exchange for air. Plants sit in small net pots, start out in a tiny rock wool cube or a handful of clay pellets, and then the root system grows out into a dark empty chamber and gets misted with nutrient-rich water regularly on a timer. How regularly? Well, roughly one minute of misting for every five minutes, 24 hours a day. Some growers prefer shorter, more frequent bursts of mist, like five seconds of mist every one minute. I've seen it work both ways, though I think that the shorter bursts are a bit of a strain on the equipment. Anyway, I wanted to mention the different qualities of aeroponic systems out there, because if you browse YouTube, there's plenty of guides for systems you can put together yourself, but many aren't really pure aeroponics, and some aren't built to deliver mist properly, and others aren't built to be reliable. To be clear, pure aeroponic setups do not have standing aerated water in the misting chamber, and all of the excess water from misting should drain back into a separate reservoir. If you do have aerated water in the misting chamber, then you're doing more of a deep water culture aeroponics cross that isn't going to work as efficiently. A lot of these hybrid systems use plastic hoses, low-pressure plastic mist heads, combined with submersible pumps that don't really have the pressure to push the spray out in a fine way. Meanwhile, as per NASA, to really deliver mist properly to the whole root mass in aeroponics, you have to use misters that spray out really fine droplets, 30 to 50 microns in size. This requires higher quality misters made of brass that look like this. And to have enough pressure to push mist through these, proper systems should also be made with PVC pipes for the water lines and use high pressure water pumps. These pumps are way heavier duty than typical submersibles, and they should be because they have to push 80 to 100 psi or even more if you have a lot of misters. You are 100% reliant on these pumps functioning properly and keeping the root mass wet at all times. Now that all doesn't sound too hard other than fine-tuning the water pressure, so what's the problem with aeroponics? It's nothing to do with nutrients or pH, those are the same as all other forms of hydro. The problem is the potential for a minor equipment problem killing your entire crop within a few hours, as well as problems encountered with mister clogs due to massive root systems or heavy nutrients in the water. If you've seen my old soil versus hydroponics episode, which I will link to in the video description, then you generally understand that soil is a buffer, and as you eliminate that buffer in favor of other mediums, what you get is faster nutrient uptake, faster growth, but also faster moving problems when there are some. For example, nutrient deficiencies and toxicities will express themselves faster and accelerate faster when they happen. Also, if the power goes out or the water pump fails, the plant roots will quickly dry out and die, so you can only attempt aeroponics in a garden that's closely monitored. Same outcome if your misters get clogged. Using regular tap water with a lot of nutrients will constantly clog those fine mist heads and make them spray really unevenly. You can fix that to some degree by using reverse osmosis water and keeping nutrient strength on the low side, but keeping nutrients on low doesn't work well for cannabis and flowering phase. Finally, if you have a big plant in your aeroponic system, the roots could clog a drain or a water line somewhere, and then you're hooped. There's even issues having to do simply with size and balance. As a cannabis plant becomes large and top-heavy, that tiny little net pot base that's holding it down gets pretty unstable. So as you're starting to see, if you try to go all the way through flowering on a pure aeroponic setup, 
the odds of a problem are pretty high and your growing root mass becomes more and more of an issue. And to do maintenance on any clog, you're going to have to expose that root system to the light, which isn't good at all. Aeroponics simply works a whole lot better with much smaller plants. So for all those reasons, it's extremely unusual to see somebody growing a full cycle with aeroponics. I've seen it done, and yes, the plants were fast-growing, massive monsters, but the person struggled so much with equipment issues that he gave up on it after several cycles, despite spending a ton of time tinkering with the setup. It's far more common to see small, low-pressure aeroponic systems that maybe aren't peak efficiency, but work okay and are only meant for clones or seedlings. And yes, the advantage is that the plants truly go like stink as far as growth speed. No other method in hydroponics is as fast as aeroponics on the same nutrient scheme. So that's my two cents for you on that. I hope you found it useful. If so, make sure you're subscribed, that you've smashed that like button, and we'll see you all next time.